13th at 7 o'clock p.m. Jeffrey Turner, Jr., son of Jeffrey and Laverne Turner, will graduate from Watoka High School in Chesterfield, Virginia on Monday, May the 20th, 2024. Jeffrey has received academic honors with a 4.2 GPA. at this 
sacred place. And I told Jerusalem that God was going to give me a house to flip. Hallelujah. To help pay off that money. October 21st, God sent me to an auction. He told me what to bid. I had Jesus on one side, and I was talking to Mama on the other. And then he gave me the right contractor. He gave me the right real estate lady. And then April 29th, God sold that lip house. financially, 
but you give us all talents and we can give other ways. So God, we always look to you and we ask you to continue to strengthen us and we do all of this for the uplifting in your kingdom. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Oh, 
from bitter to better. Let's pray while you're standing. Spirit of the living God, fall fresh upon us. In this place, the flower fades, the grass is with us. But the word of the Lord, it stands forever. Now, Holy Ghost, stand in this place until crooked places are made straight, until shattered places are mended, until the glory of the God is the glory of the living God is revealed in this place. Father, we thank you for this moment. We give you glory for every gift of motherhood. We thank you for their impact and their essence in our lives. Now, God, we pray that every person in this building is encouraged by you, enlightened through you, empowered for you, and equipped to do what it is you've called us to do. Have your way. Great God, that you are. Preach, Holy Ghost. Do what you came to do. Hide me behind your cross. I'll be careful to give your name all glory, honor, and praise. To the name of Jesus the Christ, and we pray this to God, our Father, through the power and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, and we thank you in advance. If you believe it, shout amen. amen. Hallelujah. On the way to your seat, do me a favor. Help me preach before I get going and tell your neighbor from bitter to better. From bitter, hallelujah, to better. Uh, there's been a time, at some time in every one of our lives, when we've become comfortable. Somebody said comfortable. You know, when you when you're doing real good in life, Mama Joyce, you hit that you hit that slick place where every day seems to be a good one, and every move seems to be the right one, and every thing you go to do seems to work out exactly the way that you plan. Somebody say comfortable. It's in moments such as these that oftentimes life seems to throw what we call a curveball. Something we didn't see on the horizon. Something we didn't feel like was coming. And then you have to adjust because life has thrown you this curveball. I, I, I want to start off, I think it's Linda, by talking just about where we find Naomi and her family in the story. Uh, they abode in Bethlehem. And, and Judah, in Bethlehem, Judah uh, literally means a place of praise. And Bethlehem literally means the city of prayer. And so the place that they inhabited at this season in their life was a place uh, where their praise matched their increase. Y'all understand what I'm saying? It, it was a place where God uh, connected their praise to their more than enough. And he moved on their behalf in ways that they perhaps did not dream possible, but calamity came. If you've ever been in that position where everything was going okay, brother Steve, everything looked like it was going good, and then all of a sudden, the dry season came. Yeah, come on, I need some help again. All of a sudden, the dry season came. I was, I, I was making all the right decisions financially. I was making all the right decisions from a business perspective. I was doing what I was supposed to do with my cousin and my family and my kids and my career. And all of a sudden the dry season came. And how many know when the dry season comes it'll impact everything in your life? Yeah, 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 yeah. That dry season don't just stick to one area. Uh, if that dry season is impacting your uh, financial stability, uh, then you feel stressed and that stress impacts your whole life and then you feel frustrated and that frustration spills over to your kids and next thing you know the dry season has got mixed up in everything and you snap at that folks and you angry with people who ain't done nothing to you because this area of your life is dry and I'm impacted by the dry I'm impacted by the dry season uh, because I didn't plan on being there. Uh, to be sure, I didn't plan on being in this space. It feels like a setup. Uh, I might say a setup. If it, I didn't see it coming and I, I don't know what the benefit of it is. It just feels like a setup. Every now and again, God will allow for us to be set up. Uh, and famine, if famine gets bad enough, bro, buddy, famine will make change. Yeah, uh -huh. yeah. if you're in a family that's bad enough, the family will make you do something different. Yeah, you can stand and look funny at people talking about everything you wouldn't do while you ain't got no family going on. But you got a family going on, you be even slid over in the stuff you said. Oh, y'all ain't gonna help me in here. Stuff you said you wouldn't never do. When, when you got a real family going on, and it's a real shortage happening in your life, because God made Attracted to water. Yeah, you did. I'm attracted to water. That's why so much of our bodies to 
structure is made up of water. I'm attracted to water. That's why the earth is mostly water. I'm attracted to water. That's why when he, when, 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 in the scripture he said he's making me uh, lie down and drink back. He's leaving me back. Still water. Come on. Somebody I'm attracted to water if you believe on me. And the scriptures have said, since Benzina, out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. Yeah, I'm attracted to the water. And so if I get in a dry spell too long, if forces change in my life. I know you said you were never going to go back there. You got in a dry spell. You ain't got to say amen. I know it. Yeah, you ain't got to shake your head. I know it. Yeah, I know you said I wasn't going to do it no more, but I got in a dry spell. I know it. I won't call them no more help me on the phone. I'm going to look right over here. But I got in a dry season, and I know it. I wasn't going to do that. I got in a dry season. And I, got, I told myself, I, I never broke a promise you made to yourself. I ain't talking about a promise you made to somebody. I'm talking about a promise you made to yourself. Dry seasons will force change on you that you didn't see coming. And so, Naomi, with her family, her husband, her two sons, they start packing up and they prepare to leave the city of bread because they run into a dry season. Uh, they prepare to leave the place that God had created for them because they ran into a dry season. They, they, they prepare to separate themselves to send it from what God had positioned them because they ran into a dry season. I wonder how many of us will fight back against change that God had ordained in our lives. When you go places that he hadn't told you, you open yourself up to a tax that were never meant to be yours in the first place. And, and, and the part that got me when I was reading this text in the I ain't seen nowhere where God told them to go. Logically, it might have made sense. Rationally, it might have added up. But I didn't see nowhere that God said, leave. Sister they left and they got to a place called Moab and they got to Moab. They only left life was good. Her, life was good. Her name literally means pleasant or increase. Her life was good. She liked to hear people say her name because it was good to her. Her name was good. Life was good. Amen. And she looks around and got to Moab and stuff started changing. Have you ever got out of the presence of God? The will of God and stuff started. I, I, I'm doing all the same things, but I'm not getting none of the same. Because what you felt to realize was it wasn't about everything you was doing right in the first place. It was about the grace of God over your life in the first place. If we be real with ourselves, the reality is you gave yourself too much credit. I know you don't want to say amen to it. You gave yourself too much credit. While you were busy packing, you're packing yourself on the back, you should have been waving your hands in prayer. You should have been saying, God, I thank you that you sweat my mistakes under the rug. God, I thank you that you looked beyond my faults and saw my needs. God, I thank you that when I made mistakes, you found a way to say all things work together for the good of the rule of the Lord and are the called according to his purpose. While we were busy puffing up our, our chest and telling people how we did it, what we should have been telling them was if it had not been for the Lord who was on my side, I would have been swallowed up. When you were busy trying to give people your advice, what you should have been telling them was no weapon formed against you. Y'all don't hear me. We'll be able to prosper in every tongue that rises against you. God said he'll take them out. Stop thinking this bed in the car. I took too much credit. And when God repositioned me, He showed me it won't you in the first place. <laughs> um, and she got the boy out. And I remember that her husband, with whom 
she had made the treacherous journey. <sighs> oh, have mercy. And then her sons, they got married, and she thought, Jason, maybe I can salvage something here. Isn't it interesting how we'll be quick to leave the place God ordained for us to be? But in the place he never told us to be, we'll try to salvage stuff. <laughs> he ain't never tell you to be there, but you'll work with that. See, y'all don't hear what I'm saying. You, God, I'm going to put it in the rest of just look right at you. Because uh, what we'll do is, uh, people been making us hot at our job for 20 years. Getting on our absolute last nerve at our job for 20 whole years. Snatching us out of our sanctification for the young years. For 20 whole years. Making us practice saying words we said we didn't say no more. And we say them better than we ever said them before. For 20 whole years. And you know what? We still have. For 20 whole years. We come to church and somebody look at us funny. I know I ain't supposed to be there. I know God ain't told me to stay in that place. I know these people ain't got no love in them. I know I ain't coming back there no more. I'm trying to find out how this whole thing works. Because the issue is, if God told you to be here and you over there, you deal with all the trauma over there. But you're coming to God's house and for some reason expect flawed people not to bring no mess. Turn to your neighbor and tell them I'm flawed. Yeah, I'm going to help you. Just tell them I'm flawed. So, so don't expect me to be perfect. I'm going to do my best. I'm going to give you what I got. I'm going to try. But don't expect me to be perfect. And if you really push the fold that you want to put, I might tell you. I'm going to talk to you real deep about it. I might tell you something. So, so Aaron, she, she tried to salvage in the place God ain't going to tell her to be. Well, now my son's going to get married, so maybe, now I'm going maybe I'll find some hope in here. Maybe I'll. Maybe I'll find some joy here. Maybe I'll find some happiness here. Her son just got married. She was there for 10 years. <clears throat> Didn't have no grandbabies. No extra life came forth. And, and, and if you allow me to imagine right around that time when a mother's talking to her son, her, uh, her daughter in law, she's saying, Now y'all know. Y'all have celebrated marriage long enough now. Y'all need to get to reproduce it. Everybody got that speech before. Y'all now, come on now. There's a clock ticking. We need to get to work. Get to doing what the Lord said to do. Uh, right around that time, her son's dad too. She, she came to Boaz Fool. And her husband now is gone. And her sons now are gone. And the Bible says that she heard that God had provided for the place she ran away from. <laughs> she heard that God had done what was impossible and provided for the place she she, she, she heard that the people in midst and in spite of the famine were still being blessed because God had provided. Somebody said God had provided. When God has spoken over a thing, it doesn't have to look like it's going to win in order to win. Y'all don't hear me. But when God has his hand on something, it doesn't have to meet worldly criteria in order to succeed. When God has his anointing over a thing, it doesn't matter what statistics say about you. It doesn't matter what economic background you came from. It doesn't matter how many parents you had in the home who knew you and who didn't. When God has his hand on you, the favor of God will transform your situation and your circumstance. I leave all of us wondering how 
Goodbye. Amen. She kissed her daughter. She told him, listen, I don't have nothing for you. Mm-hmm. Orpha looked at her. She said, I'm going where you go. Ruth looked at her. I'm going where you go. <clears throat> she started breaking down the circumstance. I said, she started breaking down the circumstance. She said, uh, she said, listen, I have nothing. Uh, if I got married again right now, this is Naomi talk. She said, if I got married again right now, and I had sons, nine months from now, would you wait for them to be able to have children? I have nothing to offer you. She said, you would be better off with your families back where you came from. And she prayed a prayer over them. She said, may you find peace. And what you left when you came my way. Amen. When you find peace in another husband's home. That's what she prayed. She prayed for Orpah heartbroken. She didn't want to go. But it made sense. Sure, mm-hmm. it made sense. She didn't, she didn't, want, she didn't want to leave her mom. Yeah. But it made so much sense to me. It, it made sense. sense. Mm-hmm. Amen. And so we been the Bible says bitter weeping. Y'all know bitter weeping is when you can't catch your breath. I ain't talking about your cute cry. Y'all know y'all got that cute cry when y'all get. I ain't talking about that. I'm talking about that. that that's the cry I'm talking about. The cry that Michael Paul's in it. And you can't get your hair back right. It's like you're going to pass out until you can't get your she will, she will be feeling like that. The Bible says bitter weeping. She walked away. And Naomi looks at Ruth and she says, your sister is leaving. You should go too. Grandma Ruth looks at Naomi and she says, where you go, I'll go. Where you live, I'll live. Your people will be my people. Your God. In other words, Ruth said, nothing shall separate. Ah, Nothing shall separate. When you see God's glory, when you see God's favor, okay? What do you mean, Pastor Nick? You just told me how terrible her life was. (coughs) Is there such thing as being around a person since Kathy and realized that the circumstances are the final thing on? When I recognize the oil of God on you, see, because some people think they could have been looking at me on me like, you lost everything. You ain't got no favor on your life. Ruth saw something different. Ruth looked at me and said, You lost everything, but you're still standing. <laughs> Ruth looked at me and said, You lost everything, but you still got the courage to move ahead. You took a licking and kept on ticking. You got knocked down, but got back up again. You got life's baddest blow, but you refuse to quit. There's a such thing as looking at a person and declaring that your circumstance does not have the right or the ability to define who you are. And so Ruth looked at Naomi and she said, listen here, it's no way I'm leaving your side. Because whether you see it or not, woman of God, you've got more to give. Whether you see it or not, woman of God, you've got more to offer. I'm almost where I'm going and I just want to pause and say that. I believe God sent me here this morning to let you know whether you believe it or not, woman of God, you still got more to give. I know life can hurt you up. I know life can beat you up. I know your heart's been broken. I know you've been lying in pieces. And the enemy tried to whisper in your ear, you don't have nothing else to offer. At this stage in your life, I came to tell you the devil is a liar. And he told me to let you know. God told me to let you know. You've got more to give. I dare every woman in this building to put your hand on yourself in the prayer. I've got more to give. I've been through the storm, but I've got more to give. I've lived through the rain, but I've got more to give. I felt bitterness and brokenness, but I've got more to give. I walked through the pain. But I got more to give. Somebody holler, more! Oh! 
I know it hurt, but you got more to give. And what I want to let you know when I'm done is that there's still a miracle in the middle of what you're talking about, Pastor Lee. When they only got back, Judge Regina, when she got back, uh, the woman saw her and said, hey, girl. Hey, Naomi, it's good to see you back. Good to see you back. She got mad with him. Don't call me that, she said. I know they were confused, Ashley. What you talking about? Don't call me. You don't want to go ahead and change your name? No. But don't call me that no more. That sounds too good. That sounds too hopeful. That sounds too happy. And I'm not that no more. She says, call me more. Because I'm bitter. And this is what she says. She says, I went away full. But the Lord has brought me back empty. She says, don't call me Naomi, call me more. And I almost looked at her testimony, a Deaconess Parker, and if I wasn't focused, I would have missed it. Uh, she was trying to fuss, she was trying to rant. Y'all know when God really been good to you, then. When God really been good to you, and even in your rant, you'll see his glory. Yeah, 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 yeah. Just when God really been good to you, even when you're trying to have be an attitude with him, you'll still be able to see glory in that. Uh, I messed around and I read what she said, Jason. She said, I'm going to read it one more time. I don't want y'all to think I'm making it up. Uh, 21st verse, she says, I went away full. Somebody say full. She says, but the Lord brought me back empty. Uh, if we're not careful, what we'll focus on is full and empty. I ain't focused on that part. I'm focused on the miracle in the middle. And the Lord brought me back. Y'all don't hear me. Listen, somebody ought to just give God praise for that part. And the Lord brought me back. We too busy talking about whether we feel full or whether we feel empty. If God gave you praise and another day to live, he can turn your situation around. I want you to be focused on this. The Lord brought me back in the middle of hell. The Lord brought me back in the middle of chaos. If you're living, you know what? 
not to make light of what a legal situation or circumstance is, simply pointing out the reality that you aren't the only one that has a situation or circumstance. And so I understand being caught in the middle of all that and that feeling like letting Jesus take part of it. I'm mad right now. Don't call me Naomi. Call me Maura. Because I'm bitter. Because of what he allowed to be taken. I understand. But I also understand this. That if you put yourself in the place where God commanded for you to be. And he is faithful. And he can do the impossible. And God will take you. of this truth that they have more to give. 
that they have more to give God that you have placed down on the inside of them a river of living water and by the name of he who liveth forever as long as they breathe that river shall flow God we give you glory and we give you praise continue to bless all of these and keep them under your watchful eye in Jesus name amen come on give God praise in the building hallelujah 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 listen thank you for being here today we love you god bless you heaven smile upon you do me a favor as you leave here today tell somebody about your encounter with christ tell somebody about the jesus who saved your life and after you do that then invite them to worship with you i believe god is going to be glorified in and through our desire to, 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 to help others to find him. Amen? Amen. Father, we give you glory for this worship experience. We thank you for your presence in this place. Now, God, as we depart from this place, but never from your presence, allow no evil to befall us. You let any plague come in our tent. Thank you, great God, that you are forgiving your angels charge over us to keep us in all of our ways in the name of Jesus the Christ. That we pray this to God, our Father, through the power and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. And we thank you in advance. If you believe it, shout amen. amen. We love you. God bless you. Have a smile upon you. Remember, God's going to take you 